Have you ever wondered how the world will look 50 years from now? And will we be replaced by robots in artificial intelligence? Will we be fucking robots? Welcome back to this week's uh, Faulty Logics podcast. I'm Billy. Wayne. And this is Dan. And uh, this week we have a return guest, Joey Harlem. Oh, thanks for having me back, guys. Thank oh, you. Oh, nice. <laughs> Such a long journey. <laughs> so you guys heard him from the last podcast, but we didn't really get to know him real good. But uh, I don't know. Today, Joey, tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, and where we can uh, find you. Uh, you can find me uh, in basements, uh, hanging out with dead bodies. Uh, no, <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, I'm a stand-up comic. I operate out of Toronto or wherever the money is. Uh, so I guess it's here right now. I don't have enough money to leave. So we're not paying you. Yeah, you know this is free. I got paid in Chinese food. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what. You, that's the best payment. That's paramount right there. You work five years as a stand-up comic. Eventually, three Chinese boys will pay you. <laughs> In very tender pork <laughs> and bok choy beef, for sure. <laughs> They're pretty good. Um, there are comics out there who are making nothing, I'll tell you that much. Uh, yeah, Toronto born. Yeah, Woo. So I'm proud. So if people wanted to follow you, on, do you have any social media or anything like that? Uh, or? Yeah, I live at <laughs> uh, Avenue. Uh, yeah, it's, like, it's a weird bit. you got to walk down in the back. Uh, it's, like, it's really weird because there's this uh, Chinese kid with So like, <laughs> you don't want to go like towards the back of the house but that's the only way in uh yeah it's a chinese kid with on a leash it's very he's gonna knot you on your way in but it's a good house uh you guys want to come over uh, you can also follow me on uh, instagram joe blokowski uh you can get me on facebook joey harlem if you want i don't care give me a call 647 <laughs> <laughs> that's, oh, that's my real number if you guys want to call me long distance if there's a fan in dakota who wants to just talk about the differences between north dakota and toronto i'm totally down for that <laughs> oh my god so what was it that inspired you to uh start doing stand-up comedy oh I, there's a rush in in uh talking shit i think that's what it is I love talking shit you gotta mm. have it i don't think anything beats that uh in high school i remember the only way to trump uh, a rich white kid was by being funnier and faster than him uh, so it was very like anytime they I remember one kid was like <laughs> he's making fun of me because I didn't have a cottage uh, <laughs> wow that is some that's privilege. pretty bad right yeah that's some privilege <laughs> that's some privilege I grew up in a very like a predominantly white Jewish neighborhood hence the way I talk uh, guys I'm Asian I know it yeah. sounds it's, you should I, see his hair it's pretty it's pretty remarkable yeah. <laughs> but the voice though like yeah. l- close your eyes guys I just sold a yacht. Right? It's just it's perfect. It's perfect. Uh, yeah, I grew up with people like that, and the only way to really disarm bullies uh, because they didn't like immigrants uh, was just to be funny. You know, this guy, is in Toronto. Yeah, yeah. Thornhill. No, actually, it was actually it's Bathurst and Saint Clair around that oh. area. So it's a that's very white, predominantly Jewish. Like, uh, like my school is pretty white too, but it's also a lot. Of- black kids so yeah. it balances out I like how you had to like take yeah, a pause wait, on front of black kids <laughs> <laughs> like, wait, yeah. wait does that yeah. Yeah. black kids <laughs> <laughs> it's the year 2017 we can say the end I'm kidding <laughs> don't say the end word guys so uh, a lot of people might be a bit curious about it but like what is life as a stand up comedian uh, oh wow uh, it's lonely I'll tell you that much uh, you, you know you, you got a lot of late nights uh, and uh, it's a lot of a lot of indulging in your vices. Like, I remember when I was a kid, I t- said my, to myself, no drugs. Uh, and now I'm asking my friends where to get cocaine. <laughs> uh, but it's kind of weird because you don't, you're not supposed to be awake uh, that late. You're supposed to go to sleep. Normal mm. people, if you were going to sleep at 10 o'clock, if at 10 o'clock you're saying to yourself, I'm tired, I want to go to bed, you're a good person. Uh, but there are people out there uh, who are like me who, when the sun goes down, wings come out of our back, and all we want to do is fuck everything and drink a lot. <laughs> oh uh, and that's what happens, you know? You you do all your shows at bars. You know, you're not always getting paid, so you kind of get out past the time and wait for you to get up, uh, or wait in line for you to get up, so you're maybe two, three, four beers. And sometimes you'll do multiple shows. You'll go from one show in the city to the other side of the city, do another show, and you have to buy a beer there to keep the show going, and it's just, uh, it gets pretty crazy. And the other thing that a lot of people don't tell you is it's actually kind of sad. 
It's, uh, stand-up comics are very lonely uh, people who can't afford therapy, uh, so they yell out their problems into yeah. mics. And, and expect- That's pretty good therapy from it, what we've experienced from the podcast. It is, but you have to make it funny. Like, as a stand-up yeah. like, there are so many people out there, like, uh, I've been doing this for five years, and now I know... Uh, exactly what every male Toronto stand-up comic jerks off to. It's very, very <laughs> sad. <laughs> but I mean, they're doing that. Like, there's somebody, there's a nice couple having a risotto, and then this guy's telling dick jokes. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of times it just gets pretty real. Like, do you know how many serious cigarettes I've had? Like, how many cigarettes I've had, and it's like somebody's on the brink of crying. <laughs> it's just, see, not funny. That part's not funny, but on stage, they have to turn it back on because that's the only way they feel better because. Uh, nobody can talk back, and they seem they sound right on yeah. microphone. <laughs> and I, I think like a lot of people say, like comedy comes usually comes from a dark place as well, too. So yeah, yeah, that's how you you that's how you deal, or that's how I deal at least with my issues. Uh, if I'm if I'm going through a tough time, I'll look at it from an alternative point of view, and I'll find a way to laugh about it. And that's how you deal with things. And that's why I hate the. Uh, uh, what is it called? PC? Is that what they call it? Yeah, PC. Yeah, PC. Politically PC. correct. Politically correct. Oh, fuck that shit. I just can't understand. I'm like, you're gonna not laugh at things? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Here's what I think, man. If you don't, if you're gonna say to yourself, oh, these people don't deserve to get made fun of, then they become higher than everybody who gets made oh, fun they of. They have that safe space around they get, them. Yeah, they get a safe Fucking space. Bitches. I'm like, are you serious? I got bullied my entire life. You're not gonna, you're not gonna run. Yes, no, no, the, worst. <laughs> the worst is when, uh, when somebody tells you what you should be offended about. Absolutely, like, I man. fucking hate that when a white person tells me that I should be offended at Asian jokes. Like, fuck off. Yeah, don't tell me what to laugh at. I'm I think gonna, it's hilarious. That's my world. We're fine with that. We're totally okay <laughs> with making sure it's for three cents a day. That's our business. <laughs> so, Joey, I've known you for uh, like four or five years now. We started working at a paintball place. Yeah. And since then, you've uh, it, it was already an interesting job enough to work as an 18-year-old kid for yourself as well, too. Yeah, it's pretty wild. And then from there, you also moved on to a, working at a strip club. Yeah, it was a strip club DJ. That's how <laughs> okay, I... Okay, I was thinking you were, Wait, the, were you stripper. the stripper. Yeah, that's what <laughs> I do, too. I have the ass for it, but... Uh, <laughs> Like, yeah, no, it was a strip club DJ. What are what are what are your experiences like working at these kind of places at such a young age? Like, oh, it's nuts! It's nuts, man. I was not. I was eighteen, nineteen when I started. I was the youngest uh, DJ at the time, but I was uh, trying to be a stand-up comic. So I said to myself, "Oh, this is a job in my field. I'm lucky. I'm going to do it." Uh, and then ensued probably the saddest, uh, most degrading four years of my life. I'd say uh, <laughs> things got really serious, like <laughs> because you had to grow up so quickly. Uh, you know, it's a very hostile environment. Like w- when people tell me about feminism and tell me about women's rights, uh, they I'm being told about that stuff by people who haven't experienced all all like all sides of that. And I met women in the field of uh, the adult field, I guess. I don't the en- <laughs> adult entertainment field. Right, right. And these women are probably the most empowered people I've ever met in my life because they know that they are responsible solely for themselves. And they're hustlers. They're business people. They know how to how to play with it. But you, you got to meet some pretty hostile characters in that environment. I remember the first night um, I played the. You guys remember that Kanye West uh, album, uh, Dark Twisted Fantasy? Uh, I don't remember the album. You guys don't listen to Kanye. Okay, well he. It's one of his one of the really good albums. And in the song, he samples this Black Panther speech and just does some really good like beats behind it. So uh, it ends with who will survive in America who will survive in America uh, so when that album came out this girl wanted to dance to three songs on that album but she chose that song by accident and I hadn't heard the album yet <laughs> so I played that album at a strip club uh, and that song played and she's taking her clothes off to a Black Panther speech <laughs> And she literally, she undoes her stiletto and throws it at the DJ booth and calls me a faggot. It was the funniest, (laughs) it was the funniest thing that ever ever happened. And I knew that my life would be over if I stayed there forever. Didn't didn't a lot of like people tell you like, you know, maybe you should do something more typical, like, you know, because working as a DJ in a strip club is not like a typical job. Like like an accountant? Yeah. Like what do you, what did you do when other people went like, hey, you're not doing a regular thing. You're not going to school. You're not doing this. You're not following the path. Oh, well, you, I would tell them that I'm living a more interesting life. I think that's what kept me there was because I always wanted to know what the next thing was. I wanted to know what the story was. I wanted to see how far I could take it. Mm-hmm. And not in a, like a way of taking advantage of people. I just wanted to see 
what would happen. Like this was a strip club at George and Dundas. And if anybody knows that in Toronto, George and Dundas is a very bad neighborhood. Uh, and I remember coming out New Year's and watching a guy just get bricked. Uh, it's pretty wild. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, there were a lot of bar fights. It was a rowdy part of the rowdy part of town. But when people ask me that, and I would always say it's just the money was good. I enjoy it. It didn't feel like work for a while. It was like, it was just more fun. And I got to drink on the job. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. I can't say I can do that. Yeah, cash, just cash. Tips, man, it was the best. So uh, I guess this episode, we, we were kind of talking about, we wanted to talk about the future. Specifically, uh, you, Joey, you wanted to, you, you requested to speak about the future or talk about the future. Like, what prompted you to want to take a deep, look into I think that it's important that we we look ahead uh and not and not worry about it I think it's kind of just to to look at our options to look at where we're going uh I don't know there's a lot of cool there's a lot of cool things happening. we live in a very transitional period I would say wouldn't you agree like we yeah I think I think right now we are like amazingly lucky to go through like like the information technology change. oh yeah that is man like insane how our a little device on our hands can basically do everything that like like a university can provide for you basically yeah it's, learn it's languages insane. i think the funniest thing to me is like people that have been in jail for like 20 years and they come out and they see all the technology like what the fuck happened like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. TVs in there yeah no. don't they i think some places they you they have, can't have technology they have computers in jails they talk they have like, yeah, like same as out here though, i guess but, you're yeah. allowed to but they, they don't have cell phones or anything like that it's got to be slowed down. Like you don't like you don't have those things in your hands all the time. Mm-hmm. I guess is for us. It's we got a new phone every few months, right? So it's like, ooh, we're used to it. We're used <laughs> to the updates. But when you're stuck in a hole because you stabbed a guy with a sharpened toothbrush, <laughs> I don't think you're gonna get iPhone nine, buddy. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, the future is kind of a really uh, scary thing. When I say transitional, I mean uh, it's things are changing uh, at a speed that I don't think that we're ready for. Uh, you could see it with rights. You could see it with technology. There's just a huge, like, buddy. I went home to my parents' place for the first time in like three years. Where are you from? I'm um, from here. Uh, from sorry, from North York, North York, uh, yeah. North York Scarborough. And I remember going home to my parents' place and picking up the remote. Mm-hmm. And they they had a bell, connect, a fiber box, and mm-hmm. fiber box. And I turned on the TV and I'm like, oh, what is this? And how does this work? Was it porn? <laughs> huh? Porn? No, I was just trying to watch a movie or something. I just I wish porn was playing <laughs> probably entertain my grandfather <laughs> i'm kidding he can't see uh, but <laughs> no but uh yeah i remember looking at that remote and looking at the tv and saying i am out of touch because i hadn't bought cable man you're 25 24 out there living in toronto you don't buy a box you're happy with a phone and a laptop and netflix that's right, the, right. that's the package so uh in terms of the future with your job specifically how do you think that's going to change in the next 10 20 years as a comedian like are you still going to see a lot of stand-up stuff, or is it going to evolve in a different direction? I think stand-up is always going to be there, uh, and uh, it's already changing as we speak. With the PC movement that's happening, with the feminist movement, there's a lot of uh, outspoken people on both sides. Uh, here's the thing about comedy, though, man. It's like, it's all jokes. We're constantly trying to look at something and shake it up and make fun of it. We don't always... People think that we're trying to hurt people i don't think a lot of comics go on stage to purposely ruin somebody's evening i don't think anybody's trying to do that people are trying to go up there and just make fun of stuff and everybody and everything should get made fun of it's just that's how you deal with these things i think from a non-comedian perspective i see comedians as critical thinkers who kind of think differently right they they put a spin on life right oh yeah and they and their job is to express how they feel, not in the traditional sense where we have a conversation, but in a in a unique way to entertain as well, right? And that's a very tricky thing to do. And a lot of people get offended because that art form is kind of like, it's easily to offend, right? Oh, it's so easy. Uh, and nowadays, all it takes is a word. Yeah, exactly. And then people have already judged you. Uh, like you talk, like I've got a lot of comics who have stories about them being raped, now that's that's wow. that yeah, story that's, heavy. Yeah, that's, that's heavy. already heavy. Then yeah. you tell that effect by just saying that word, people are already taken aback. But the true art form in comedy comes in when you can coast a crowd into thinking that, into into that subject without them thinking it. It's like very if you can get into a subject that that's sharp, that sharp, and you could do it naturally where it just happens, and then before you know it, you're there, 
and you're like, oh, now we're talking about this, but it doesn't hurt anymore. That's where true art, true comedy comes from. It's like really tough to do. It's very hard. <laughs> uh, just to take it back a bit, um, in terms of comedy, like who who are the people that inspired you? Uh, okay, wow, that's tough. Uh, I would say Pablo Francisco uh, was really one of my favorites. Cause he's, I remember him from like I remember like he's one of the first like YouTube videos I saw, and I yeah. saw him little tortilla like, boy. Yeah, buddy, that's <laughs> oh, the, one of the best bits I've ever heard in my life. Uh, he does like an action trailer and a really good Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah, impression. That was cool. Oh man, uh, yeah, him, uh, Louis Black, who's just an angry Jewish dad, uh, and Stephen Wright. Those three, uh, absolute favorites for sure. Those guys really helped. Uh, yeah, I want to be them for sure one day. Not gonna happen. <laughs> so with uh, with jobs and stuff of like that, um, one of the big things that people are concerned about. Um, the, the the accountancy giant PwC actually did a, a survey, and or they did a research or some sort of whatever, they did a whatever. thing with numbers. Yeah, and uh, basically they're suggesting that by the early twenty thirties, thirty eight percent of us, thirty eight percent of U.S. jobs will be replaced by robots. Hmm. And like they're saying that the biggest ones are going to be like people working in the financial sector and everything like that, uh, accountants and Bean stuff. Bean counters, eh? Yeah. So. Uh, they're going to be the highest risk in terms of uh, getting replaced. Well, yeah, because everything can be done by a software. Yeah, I, right. I, I Excel. Spoke, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I spoke with someone about this for a long time, where someone was trying to tell me that um, that is not possible to replace anyone in financial analyst, right? But I was trying to tell them like it is very easy to replace someone in financial Absolutely. analyst, right? Because it's just models, it's data and no, logic, yeah, like, right? The only thing robots can't replace, for, like in terms of financial analyst. As if you're looking at behavioral biases. Mm, okay, that's yeah, the I can only see that. thing. Because almost anything else, you can look at algorithm. Mm-hmm. They can they can put in all, like how risky they, they think they're able to take uh, be or and what kind of return they want. But sometimes it takes an analyst to see if that's true. Yeah, I can right. see that happening for sure. So like, what might happen then is like you might have ten accountants lose their jobs, and you might get one guy becoming an analyst that kind of oversees what these bots are doing. A robot leash holder guy. Or you make a robot to oversee them. <laughs> That's too much. It's too much robot. I think like labor though is going to be a huge thing once they're replaced by robots though, because a lot of people have labor jobs, right? Manufacturing and stuff of like that. Oh, buddy, for yeah. sure. If I um, could get a robot that could just make IKEA furniture for people, oh, yeah. that'd be great. Oh, oh, that was one of the interesting things in the article too. They're saying that. Uh, they're struggling with getting robots to make IKEA furniture. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny, man. For but some reason, yeah. Also, IKEA IKEA furniture building is the reason why most relationships like yeah, fall apart. Yeah. To be fair, these, have you seen those manuals? They're horrible. They're really. They don't bad. make any sense. I like if Lego. If they had the manuals for Lego like building, mm-hmm. and they use those for IKEA, I feel like they do a lot better. <laughs> There's no color. Like you can't differentiate length properly. Yeah, it's like no. there's always like a piece missing or an extra piece too, and yeah. you're, you're like paranoid that like is this did I fuck up? Like yeah. did I was I supposed to put this thing here over here? Yeah, like it's like this is gonna fall apart one day. What's better than two screw sizes? <laughs> Three screw sizes, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! And then another big uh, area that's gonna impact is like transportation. Uh, we talk about on our, on our podcast previously about like uh, automated drive uh, driving mm, vehicles yeah. and stuff oh, like that. Scary. That um, that is gonna be the biggest thing that will change this world. I think in the next like fifty years, like self driving anything is gonna change the world because I think like fifty percent of the world's income comes from moving something from one place to the next. Oh, for sure, right, buddy? Transpo, yeah, big market. It's crazy because big trucks. Um, like those truck drivers, right? They they get like good money for driving things around, right? Long nights, but they man. also cause a lot of accidents. Yeah. yeah. So imagine if all of those people lose their jobs, like what are they gonna do, right? Yeah. What is it gonna happen? Like we're we're gonna be useless as no, people. Like I see all, all this. Like it's a possibility. It can happen. It can absolutely happen, right? That we have the technology, but I don't think the government will let it happen. I think the government will let it no, happen because man. you know what? It's, it's if the government. No, it's no, wait cheaper in what way for companies? If all these are if all these uh, people are being replaced. There's no taxes being paid to the mm-hmm. government, right? So what's going to happen is the government will end up subsidizing certain industries to hire these workers. Yeah, pay them so more people can work, make money, and give more money to the government, right? Yeah, it's a it's a big hustle, and they got to keep it going, man. Robots aren't going to pay bills. They're not going to make money they work for that. Free. 
Exactly. They work free. They're not going to make money that'll actually contribute to the economy. They'll save you money. Oh yeah. But they will not spend it. And that's what I, I think. It's uh, that's a spooky idea, though, man. Like, I think. In, yeah, I think in terms of the the trucking industry, though, like there will be less drivers, and I think more like cargo people that moves the stuff around. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Like if I think robots should be put in places where jobs that could essentially endanger lives if it's yeah. done wrong. Yes. That should be that should be replaced, but if it's jobs that people want to do, then why replace it? I, I think that's a completely wrong idea why? to do because if if you kind of like in order to make the world a better place, right? Mm-hmm. You can't like make way for I'm I'm gonna be very like cruel about this, but for the weak, mm-hmm. right? Essentially, they're obsolete, and we're giving them a job because we feel bad for them that they're gonna lose a job, which mm-hmm. is the wrong way to advance a society, right? Because mm-hmm. if you do this long enough. We're going to have a society of useless people eventually, right? Like, imagine all these people who keep driving trucks, and we have all automatic cars for personal people going everywhere. And we look at these truck drivers, we're going to, like, alienate them at one point, right? Like, look at these people driving these trucks, wasting government money. And then and then they're going to have a hate... But they're not group. wasting government money. They're making... They're- well, well I mean, like... getting paid and paying off the government. Yeah, but... The taxes. But, like, like if we, when we look at... um the government, right? And mm-hmm. we see how slow their workers are. We yeah. all get very upset at how ridiculous it is, right? Yeah, it takes four months or for even me to like get unionized a unionized workers and yeah. stuff Exa- like that. Exactly. So imagine that thinking in a world where all of our cars drive themselves. When we want to go somewhere, we press a button, our car comes to pick mm-hmm. us up to go somewhere. And we see truck drivers. We're like, what is the point? So we start looking at that and going, well, maybe they're here because the union or whatever it is. And then we start alienating them because like their jobs are, are useless, right? Mm-hmm. So you kind of like by not advancing things, eventually it'll reach a point where people will figure it out, right? People are not dumb, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's that's that I think is a concern there, right? So keeping keeping it for the sake of keeping, it, I don't think is a good approach. Like right now, yeah, maybe transition them to something. But I don't I don't think that's what he's talking about. The sake of keeping it, I think he the government has a certain model, and the model is keep people working and they'll make money, and mm-hmm. they're going to spend that money, we can tax them on that money, line our pockets further. Uh, the robot idea, the robot aspect is great because, yeah, you're right, mm-hmm. it's going to make things easier, It's yeah. going to, but it's going to take away from the income of the government. Yeah, the government will not be making as much. It feels much. like it's unsustainable. Like Once the jo- robots take over most of these people's jobs, who's paying to keep these robots going? Yeah, it'll provide right? work, but I don't know if it'll have, like, it'll have the same, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We'll have the same amount of work. Provided depends if the robots are made in China or Japan. I think Japan. Um, if we compare to like the industrial revolution, right, mm-hmm. where people before were farmers, right, um, as soon as the industrial revolution happened, their jobs were switching and transitioning, right. And at the very beginning of that era, people were probably equally as confused as we are now, where we are like, "Where's the jobs going to go?" If people, mm-hmm. if one factory can farm a thousand farms and produce as much product. What did all these thousand farmers do, right? And then I think eventually, like, when we create new things, new things come up, right? Like, yeah. So imagine, um, like, I'm just like thinking off the top of my head. If we have like, like, the self-driving cars, right? Mm-hmm. Um, new industries, like, uh, so people maintaining it obviously is going to be a thing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, there's going to be like, like traffic that's going to be different, right? Like, yeah. So how rebuilding how, roads, rebuilding yeah, the way that how, lights how work. are all these things going to change, right? Like, and the manufacturing is going to advance. We need mm-hmm. people for that. Like, there's a lot of growth and change, but we, the only problem is we don't know, right? But I feel that advance as much as possible, and then adjust and redistribute as we as accordingly. It comes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I feel like by if we're going to be going moving that quickly in technology by getting automated vehicles and stuff, we'll also I think at that point be going to space. Yeah. Space Ho- hopefully is. Hopefully, yeah. we'll be investing a lot more money in that because that would be cool. I just want to have sex at a space station. <laughs> Anybody yeah, else? it's like SpaceX would be a lot of work. Oh, buddy. Yeah, I feel like it's right. a, it would be. But I'll tell you, if we ever go to Mars, like the space colony is going to get like ruined by SpaceX. It's going to be like, because <laughs> like wait, space wait, cheating, like a white planet. Yeah, it's like the astronauts are going to be like, what are you talking? Stop looking at my girlfriend. And they're totally going to like fuck each other up. And then it's going to be an emotion. The gonna... space sperm flies around, right? Oh, like, yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't drop. And it's like, you can't wipe it off. It floats. Yeah. Like, after the first mission, the second mission that goes to, like, resu- resupply them, they're just going to find a girl covered in blood and a steel <laughs> dildo and a bunch of dead men everywhere. <laughs> I feel like that'd be the, that'd definitely be what happened. Uh, yeah. Hopefully we go to space. So, the, they're, they're saying that uh, the jobs with the least risk of uh, being replaced with robots and stuff are, I guess, jobs like nannies, teachers, white-collar workers, um, 
in the finance finance industry and even communication staff. Um, I mean, Wayne, you have a kid coming mm-hmm. along the way. Um, have you thought about their career development path at all? Like whether she needs to become a robot? <laughs> or <laughs> cyborg children? Yeah, or like, you gotta embed the metal in them right, right from when they're born, man. Yeah, like, yeah, like, you just you, need to prepare what what's needed for the future, right? Like when I was talking about robots replacing jobs, the way I'm seeing the way you're uh, explaining it, it seemed like all jobs. Or almost like majority, like proportional. I don't. I don't think. Yeah, I think. I don't think. Like it depends on the job. Like, like labor I don't want, jobs like, are easy to replace. Let's say current jobs will be replaced because it's going to be obsolete, but new jobs will be created. Mm-hmm. Right. So that will keep everything sustainable. So yeah. So what I'm gonna have to teach my daughter is how to kill the robots, <laughs> <laughs> so she gets to keep a job. So your daughter is going to become Sarah Connor. Uh, Sarah Connor. Trying? Sarah Connor from the Terminator. You're, you know, you work for Skynet for sure. Yeah. You're pushing this robot initiative pretty hard. <laughs> you, you said weaker people. <laughs> it's like Billy. We need to check if you're a robot right now. <laughs> Stab him right now. How much metal? Uh, that's a scary thought, though, man. You imagine having like a a, a robot babysitter. You remember iRobot? You ever see yeah. Will Smith? I was yeah, think dude. about that. Oh, man, that was spooky. Can't and, trust them, man. Yeah. It's That's just, like a what's that movie with um I robot no million million <laughs> no is it million dollar million dollar babies? That's about robots. A bicentennial man. Bicentennial uh, man. Yes, I Robin never watched Williams. that either. Yeah. Oh, Robin what a, what a winner! Exactly. That that yeah. movie is. Oh, I love Robin. Robots Williams. are uh, in Hollywood. The way that they try to make like they're trying to prepare us for the robot yeah, future. Yeah, exactly. Because they're getting like every time I watch a movie with a robot, I start feeling emotion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like uh, in a uh, what <laughs> like, is uh, that movie? The Alien movie, Prometheus, mm-hmm. uh, with um, what's his name? Fastbender is the robot. I felt for that guy. I'm That's like Magneto, no? Yeah, it's Magneto. Yeah. But I'm saying to myself, the movie, I'm like, why am I emotionally invested in this robot? He isn't. He's not real. You know which movie would be great to have um, actually happen? Wally. Wally. Yeah. No, man. You, why not? You want to be a fat guy I, sitting in a chair? If everyone else is fat. I'm perfectly comfortable <laughs> with that. <laughs> if we're all fatties, we're all yeah, fatties. No, no judgment there, right? <laughs> oh my god. That's the only one though. Like I robot, that shit's scary when uh, yeah, the robot. If it goes bad, then oh shit, we yeah. gotta start killing them. <laughs> See, that's your future, Billy. No. Think about it. Because I okay, like when well like realistically t- talking about teachers and stuff, I think they will be around like for mm-hmm. a long, long time. Yeah. Like forever probably. And but what about Google? Mm-hmm. Google could replace teachers. No, but the teaching is not Wikipedia. about information. Teaching is about like guidance right? no but yeah. you know even today i don't i don't see that anymore it seems like the teachers only in for themselves and they'll just do their job teach and done. oh yeah to find a good teacher uh out there the one that really cares and is going to is going to provide you with the mm. actual support that you need which is a lot mm. uh, is pretty rare i would say like it's very... I, yeah even like after school programs I, oh you they're all going hear, yeah they're, they're all disappearing no, no teacher wants to do it because it's no one's giving me extra no time. Yeah, no extra money. Right? No money. I can imagine though, when a world when everything is really cheap, um, mm-hmm. because like of China? Uh, no, like everything is automated. Everything is really easy to make. Energy is easy to make. Food's easy to make. Teaching is probably going to be one of the best jobs because it can't be replaced, right? Mm-hmm. And it won't be like a classroom of like fifty people. It'll be like, like a classroom of five, right? Where you yeah. teach a small set because teachers are so abundant. Then you can just teach small sets and give me more meaningful actual like curriculum to them but at the same time that would mean population ha- like the growth has yeah. gone down and for the listeners uh he's got his legs crossed in- <laughs> <laughs> while he's talking about this <laughs> easy yoga jeez oh okay um yeah so continuing on with like talks about like self-driving there's other technologies that are actually more prominent and probably more realistic in the future one of them is called the hyperloop so in toronto it's going to <laughs> there's there's a company called Transpod who's going to try to make one from going from Toronto to Montreal. Oh yeah, buddy. Yeah, I love Montreal. Sorry, I get really excited when people say that. So, <laughs> no man, why? Listen, it's past me, or I'm past it. No, that's that's my reason. Oh, okay. Why? Why? What's your reason? Seems like that. That's the only reason why people go to Montreal. Strip clubs. Strip clubs. You don't I go mean, anywhere. He's like, <laughs> times. He's Born again on the way. I was there the time <laughs> that Wayne went. I was there <laughs> the first time. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. So, um, the the hyperloop is uh, it's kind of like from the Jetsons, right? It's a yeah. it's a it's a tube uh where you shoot like a big train through, basically, right? Dude. So instead of shooting people, you shoot trains, right? Yeah, that'd be so boring though. You're just in a tube. Won't you get claustrophobic? No, no, it's a train though. This is a train. Oh, you're it's like oh, a gigantic oh, tube. Oh, so you're talking like, about like a tube, like a, Oh man, yeah. All right, that's too much. <laughs> that's too. I, I would be spooky. I don't know if I could handle that. 
there's something about going that quickly yeah. in like a thing that you can't control. Like, yeah. Yeah. I don't know, like water slide scary. Yeah, I you can guys, barely handle that. I, like, because you try to put your hands on the walls of water, it's like, I'm going too fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know where I'm going. you start, you can't stop. You're, yeah. you're in it for the whole ride. And then you start thinking about large animals in the water, and you're like, wait, <laughs> okay, I am in the throat you, of a you whale. Have some deep, dark fear. <laughs> I, do, I am afraid of deep water. Yeah. I, to be and honest, a lot of times I'm thinking, so I'm going to die right now. Yeah. So what happens, right? This is it. <laughs> I'm gonna go down there, and it's just gonna be a red hole. <laughs> yeah. So the, the hyperloop. Um. So I'll I'll kind of like uh, explain like what it is, and then I'll kind of go into the benefits of it. So the hyperloop is a uh, vacuum tube. So what it what that means is there's no air friction, right? So you can okay. travel at a ridiculous speed. Uh, the speed that you can travel at is about 1,200 kilometers per hour, right? That is like Bugatti Veyron fast, like max max beyond that right can wait so can a person's body handle that speed yeah well you're if you're you're on a train you're not like like no no, no I, I thought that's why they through. even te- they have to test astronauts before they go out into space right that that g4 spin well, thingy well the thing about rocket ships is that they accelerate yeah. right uh this is going to be at a constant speed when you're at doesn't a con- need to accelerate to that constant speed yeah, well, it's a, it's not that bad. Like, once you get to the speed, you maintain speed, right? The, the point is that the rocket has to keep going faster and faster and okay. faster, right? This this is not relatively difficult to reach if you're in a vacuum, right? The the, the difficult thing about tra- traveling fast is the air resistance, mm-hmm. right? So what this is, is it removes that air resistance. You can travel at a ridiculous speed because it's floating on a magnet, right? So it's not like riding mm-hmm. on rails No anymore. contact. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's basically a giant floating train shooting oh, so through like a, a hover train. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a really nice contained hover train, right? Um, so the idea originally came from um, a California... That looks spooky. Yeah, so... Oh, my God. It originally came from a California like a to San Francisco uh, project, right? Mm-hmm. So the cost of this was actually, like, cheaper than building traditional trains. You so, say San Francisco? Yeah, of, of course. Of course a gay Francisco. man. Gay man did this. <laughs> <laughs> if you saw this train, you'd be like, that train's gay. Yeah, it's, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty, you know... It's not a bad thing. It's just, like, a very... Yeah, it's a good-looking train. It's actually I, from Elon Musk, too. I, of course. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I'd totally put that train in my butt, for sure. <laughs> It'll be pretty fast. Oh, yeah. Just how I like it. Okay, that's yeah. too okay. much. Yeah, Sorry, so I didn't mean it. Yeah, so it's, <laughs> cheaper, it's cheaper than building traditional trains. Mm-hmm. So traditional train, uh, the project was going to be like $12 billion or 13 closer to $13 billion. This is seven point five billion, right? I guess that makes sense because they don't have to drill the hole. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, that's cool. Ton, All right. right. Yeah, so... The, the best part of that is that this these will have uh, solar panels on top, so they'll yeah. actually build more energy than they use. Oh, bastards. I know. They thought of everything. <sighs> but it feels like if this, if there's any mistakes with this train, like uh, this one flaw, like one random day something happens. Does this implode? Everyone's dead. Like going that, that speed? fast? Yeah. Yeah. They're going to, it's going to manage to somehow find a, a brick wall in the middle of nowhere and just crash right into it. Everyone's oh, dead. Oh, my God. And then they're just going to... Because it's underground, they're gonna hide the bodies. It's, wait, it's underground? No, no, it's it's above. Yeah, it's, it's a above. pillar oh, above. Sorry, I, gonna, I misheard that. Everyone's gonna see this. It's gonna be raining dead bodies. Sorry, Elon. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Did not catch that. My ADD is flying. Yeah. So um, the the main point is that this is like from LA to San Francisco. You yeah. can get there in thirty minutes, and the cost of the ticket will be like thirty bucks one way. That's too much. That's too much. What? For That's so LA cheap. To San Francisco. Thirty dollars. Eat me. <laughs> <laughs> Am I getting dinner? <laughs> Am I getting dinner? That's what I want to know. For thir- what am I getting for 30 bucks? I want somebody massaging my thighs. $30. <laughs> I'm a cheap guy, man. I'm sorry. $30. Yeah. Even if I were a millionaire, $30, I'd be like, how many beers? How many beers am I getting? <laughs> I might have a drinking problem. not sure yet, but uh, we're going to find out next Dude, year. Dude, this sure. is San Francisco we're talking about. Everything's expensive. Yeah. Oh, this that's is true. China. Right? Yeah, that's if true. If it's China, then this is... Is China really that cheap? Yeah. It depends where you go. If you go to Beijing and Shanghai, no, it's not. Well, no, when I was in Beijing, so uh, I had this massage. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. That was um, 100, 100 uh, yuan or whatever it's called, renminbi, right? And it was, so calculate back is around 15 bucks. Okay. So it's massage and all you can eat. And no one fucking told me it was all I can eat. Okay, I'm sorry. Did you just say a massage and all you can eat? Yeah, man. They bring <laughs> no, the food. No, you didn't do what you just I said. I gotta go. I gotta go, guys. Sorry, this is down here. I gotta go right so, like, now. Yeah, but no one told me like, you can eat whatever you want, right? Yeah. Well, As a little pissed. You're telling me somebody can play with my thighs. Yeah. And they'll feed me deep fried Well, they'll hand it squid. to you and you feed yourself. Oh, my God. 
for the listeners, you don't even know how hard my nipples just got. <laughs> like, I got a thing for, like, uh, deep fried salty squid. I don't know if you guys, like, they call it calamari, but I just yeah, call it fried right, squid. Right. But I will literally, I'll murder a family <laughs> for some squid. I think it was actually specifically a, a foot massage, and they went up my leg, and they went up to my thigh. I couldn't stop laughing. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. You're having too good of a time. A little yeah. too close. Because yeah. it it's ticklish, right? <laughs> yeah. That's my pee-pee. <laughs> Yeah, I'd think that I'd probably yeah I'd react the same way. I still get scared when I get haircuts when they cut too close to my ears. What? Yeah, you ever get? Oh, I'm still a kid, eh? Nobody else <laughs> no, has that feeling anymore. I love my haircuts. Oh, like, nice. Well, Joey hasn't gotten a haircut yeah. in a while, so <laughs> hey, don't. <laughs> I cut my own hair. <laughs> The best, the best thing about China haircuts too, though, is that they actually massage you too while yeah. you get the haircut too. That Beams, is the best. Like, okay. I think Wait, I was going to we'll see how I hard this guy's dick just got. <laughs> I think it was, uh, this, this was around 20, no, not 10 years ago, okay? I think it was 10 yuan for the haircut. And so when I was getting the, when they were shampooing my hair, it was for like 10, 15 minutes and they're just massaging. Mm. And this, the girl that's massaging my head with the shampoo was positioning herself like right over me. Seemed like it was, it was like a show too. Yeah. <laughs> some happy type type shit. Wow. Yeah. Faulty logic goes to Beijing. We're going to Beijing, yeah. guys. <laughs> yeah. That's it. <laughs> I can't do that. I'm getting. But yeah, Aiden's cheap there. That's crazy. That's crazy. I guess I gotta go now. So 50 years from now, right? Let's imagine 50 years from now. Like there's a there's a lot of PC culture, like you mentioned, right? Yeah, okay. I'll probably so, be dead by then. so I'm I'm wondering, Don't what do you guys think? Do you, do you think that uh, there's going to be like uh, actual like race thing still? Because a lot of like people's kids are gonna be mixed now, right? So how do you be racist to? People like that. I think it's still going to exist because those people are still breeding. <gasps> yeah, no, I think he's right. right. There's a lot of... Ra- racism is old. Yeah. And yeah. it's and, like know, a whiskey. As long as they're breeding and they stay within their community and keep teaching those values, it's going to oh, be yeah. forever. It's true. Like, you see kids these days, and you'd think that kids these days are more acceptant, uh, accepting of other people, mm-hmm. but you still see some shitbag kids that oh, are racist man. as fuck, and it's like... Who the fuck taught you this shit? Because yeah, and it's all their parents, man. And you yeah. you live in that environment, and you're taught that way. It's just think about it this way: you're used to uh, your favorite drink is orange juice, yeah. And your entire life, oh, orange juice, orange juice, orange juice. <laughs> Wayne just so, went like, oh yeah, <laughs> like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you juice. just kidding, but he, he, oh yeah, it's pretty hard. <laughs> you should see how hard his dick got. Like, <laughs> I said orange juice, but you know what I mean, right? You, you like orange juice, you're used to orange juice, and then all of a sudden, uh, somebody tells you. Uh, there's no more orange juice and now there's apple juice. Imagine how upset you're going to get. Right. That's how dumb, like, that's how, like, deep racism is <laughs> put into people's minds as children. It's just, it's there. It's, mm-hmm. like, woven into their mind. And uh, it's like, oh, you're white, you, you're better, and you deserve more than everybody else. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, Jesus, man, what are you doing? That's why I like Toronto a lot, because I never really felt that, like, friction from anybody mm-hmm. here. I've right? had it. A- it's just there. A yeah. black man. It's not as bad. Came up to me and said he's going to kill all Chinese people because of SARS. Wow. wow. What the shit? Yeah. He, I was just walking on uh, Gerard. He, he had yeah, a Yeah, you would be, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's like around um, uh, like Regent Park area, right? He just stopped right next to me with me and my gr- uh, girlfriend at the time and said exactly that. Wow. Yeah, it was rough. What'd you do? Do you, like what do you do like when someone says that to you? Did you like, kung fu fight him? No, <laughs> yeah. no I, I was I was so shocked. I just looked up. I'm like, the fuck? Like, yeah, who, who you, the fuck says that? And then you just ride away on his bike. You, and I, I'm I was still pretty fat back then. I, I was gonna run. You get pretty you you get blindsided by those things because yeah, it's like especially in Toronto where it's like it is not so prominent. So when it does happen, you're just like, whoa, where the fuck did this come mm-hmm. from? Mm-hmm. Like all out, out of nowhere. And like even um, we were talking about how kids kids uh. They they have they're racist at a young age too. Mm-hmm. I remember a couple of years ago they had that video where uh, the one parent uh, who their kid was being bullied by another racist kid. That parent contacted the parents of that kid, and then the the parents of the kid were defending the kids. Like I don't give a shit what he says. Yeah. Like yeah, you you uh, your kid is black, whatever. Blah blah blah. Hey, I have like, a question before up. we go any further because I was asking some people at work they couldn't give me an answer. Is this still racist if you use the wrong derogatory term? Like let's oh, say you're using I, a derogatory term. It's no, wrong. but for all you know, they, they might not understand that's what it's meant for, right? Let's say if I called um, Billy a gook, is that racist? Are you? Unless saying maybe it, he just well, thinks what is your intent of saying it? Like, <laughs> the term yeah. gook is like racist. It's racist. No, but maybe he just that person will just think it's it's an insult. 
not specifically insult to Koreans, but because he hears so much people like throwing it around, he just knows it's, that's oh, the, that's so the it's kind of like being like, oh, that's so gay. Kind well, of like that. I think it, kind of. It, you're talking about just kind of gender, like generalizing. Yeah. Right. Like just throwing something at a but wall. But then around everyone yeah. else, they know exactly what that means, and then they're gonna throw this guy's um, like this harass, um, uh, like or like racism. calling any type of Asian a chink, even yeah. though they're not Chinese. Yeah. I'm more Spanish. I'm Filipino. Uh, <laughs> keep me away from your kind. Uh, no, uh, I think that uh, it's very it's ignorance. It's not just racism. It's ignorance. It's just people being dumb and uneducated. It's like, okay, here's what's for dinner. Uh, all black people suck. All yellow people are dumb. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah. just to teach somebody about culture is such a. It's so tough, man. I think. For us, we grew up in where you guys grew up in Markham, North York, Toronto, Toronto, Toronto. Toronto, Toronto. So yeah. we're used to that. We're used yeah. to seeing other people and having you know people of different cultures in our classrooms. But if you go down to the, if you go down to like the below the Bible Belt in the USA, it's not happening, man. There isn't everybody there. There's not a lot of people are are gonna learn about us. This mm-hmm. is not gonna happen. Nobody's gonna invest that much time into teaching that because they don't think it's important. But in because nowadays, the future. We're running out of space. Yeah. And we're going to be way ahead of the curve because everybody else is just going to be <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there's going to be black people in the Antarctic, mm. for sure, in no time at all. It's going to happen. There's probably there. They're probably there right now. There's like two or three, maybe. Probably. Yeah, most. Hey, no one wants to be there because it's so fucking cold. Yeah, nobody wants to be there. But that's what's going to happen because of overpopulation. We're going yeah, to have to it's going to be cheaper to go there. Yeah. And we're going to have to learn to get along, I think. and Or I hope. I hope that's the case. I hope that in 50 years, we end up in a position where we finally embrace each other and say, you know what? We're, we're all going to be over 70 then. Yeah, man. I'm going to be 80. over 80. Yeah, 70, 80. Wow. <clears throat> I'm I, old. I do feel like by then, I think race isn't going to be as huge of uh, an issue anymore, but I th- I still think religion is going to be... Uh, do you think religion is still going to be? Really? I think religion is going to be way bigger mm-hmm. than race at that point. You think it's going to be bigger? Yeah, like in terms of conflict. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so okay, so not relative to now, but just in terms of the two conflicts versus each other. Yeah. Okay, I okay. see. No, because you know, if you look uh, like over time, all the wars has been less about it's becoming less about race and more about religion now, right? So I guess if that trend keeps going, it's going to be like all out Christians against Buddhism or something. Mm. I think that's actually going to be resolved relatively soon, soon though. Fight. I feel so. I'm not a robot, but I'm th- I'm saying this. Okay? <laughs> That's what a robot would he's say. Gonna invent, yeah, he's gonna be like create a new type of robot. Call like, radio no, 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 like, So what I'm thinking know. is gonna be the big problem is whether how, whether or not people think it's okay to modify your genes. Oh, I was thinking is if it's okay to become to have, a superhuman. That's uh, what I think is gonna be the problem. I thought Billy was gonna say if it's okay to have sex with robots. No, <laughs> no, it's gonna be okay to do that for sure. It's gonna be a thing. Well, That's Japan's gonna be it's like, happening. Yeah, it's fine. Those are fucking vibrators. Really? Same shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good way to put it. We're they're way ahead of us for sure. Yeah. So you think that uh, you're talking about like genetically modifying? Yeah, like like imagine like if you're predisposed. Like good good solutions is like so you're predisposed to cancer or your family. Mm-hmm. You know they're gonna have cancer. You can modify oh, that, fix fuck. that, right? Yeah. So that's the good side of things. I think but, they're doing that right now. Yeah, exactly. So, trying but, for sure. But, but there's always money involved in capitalist societies, oh, right? Yeah. So if someone wants to pay to have their son or daughter become a superhuman uh they're raised they're they look like perfect they're strong they're smart yeah. what's wrong with that right like or is that going to be a, a huge debate right like imagine that like what's going to happen uh that will be because of the money right like it's gonna that's gonna be a really elitist thing mm-hmm. if uh rich families are going to be the ones who are going to be creating these children mm-hmm. or spartans uh who are able to dominate like that kid's going to dominate in a sport yeah that kid's going to dominate in school uh it's good but i feel like everybody should if that's the case everybody should be Everybody should be allowed to do that. Every, equal opportunity. Equal opportunity for everybody. And that's the thing when it comes to healthcare, uh, it should, buddy, you should just be killing every cancer cell you see. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Uh, as a doctor, you do that whole pledge thing or whatever it is. Right. Like, oh, I want a new yacht. I'll leave this one in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, but, but it's going to be like a debate. Like, is that going to be right or wrong? Because like, aside from the rich and poor people being able to do it or not, like, is that a right or wrong thing? Because there's going to be a lot of people against that. It kind of goes with religion where they think that you're playing God now, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, I see where you're going there. 
Oh man, that is kind of spooky. Yeah. Like what, what is the choice here? Like, cause even like for me thinking about like probably having grandkids by then, right. I don't even know if I would want them to do it because it's such a different way of mm-hmm. thinking from now in a perfect world, religion dissipates mm-hmm. and then that becomes the norm and being, you know, fighting those fights on a, on a level of, on a, on a gene level, mm-hmm. uh, would probably be a lot more helpful and, uh, better for mankind, mm-hmm. but people are a lot in the whole, a lot, uh, stuck in that mindset of, oh, well, uh, you know, play, you know, play God. Yeah. He died right when you're supposed right? to die. Well, you already see these like extremist like Christian people who are like refusing even medication and everything. They're like, yeah, the vaccines. Oh, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna pray. People. <laughs> I'm He's like, pray I'm to gonna God God pray my, my son to, uh, to yeah. good health, and God will heal him or whatever. Like and that. so many people have died because yeah. of that, right? Yeah. And, they, and the parents go to jail. Because the good neglect, thing is, though, right? that the law actually will say that that's negligence and the parents Absol- go to prison. Like, Absolutely. That's the good thing. Is that it's not like, oh, you know, this is what your belief is. But then taking that into your situation where, like, you know that your family has a hereditary disease or whatever mm-hmm. like that, and then you choose not to do it. Yeah, that's just, That's the same thing, absurd. right? That is. That would be. That, honestly, if there was a cure to prevent you from getting sick and you don't take that, yeah. my God, then you should. You, oh, <laughs> man. I just. Hang I don't yourself. Know. I yeah. feel like religion is completely fine up into the point when you start harming people when you when you start getting in the way of somebody's survival mm-hmm. or you start actively going out of your way you to start s- having crusades to invade oh, people then you need to calm down <laughs> yeah you need to get a hobby you need to build a boat or something because it's like what are you doing mm-hmm. like i don't know i could barely spend enough time doing things that i like like i like stand-up comedy but there are nights where i'm lazy mm-hmm. af and i don't want to do anything and to pr- like put that much energy towards hate towards harming yeah, exactly. somebody that's nuts that's nuts, man. That's what I really believe about back in the day, too, is that those people probably just didn't have much to do. Like, the, the, the main things is farm and kill, right? Like, there's no entertainment, mm-hmm. right? We didn't, like, there's nothing to do, right? So, you're saying it's a thrill for them to do that. Buddy, no, no, they didn't have bored. Wonderland. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they can't go to Wonderland and whenever they're bored. Like, they're, they have too much energy. <laughs> like, well what work. am I going to do? I've already farmed my cross. Well, I might as well go there and pillage that village. <laughs> yeah. I don't like that guy. He's got red hair. <laughs> Yeah, that's probably what it was, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, people are, and yeah, idle hands make devils work, right? Singularity. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there's an article done by, oh, there's this dude named Ray Criswell, and apparently since the 1990s, uh, he's made like 147 predictions with an 86% accuracy rate. Nostradamus. <laughs> yeah. And one of the things that he uh, he predicted was that in the within the next twelve years, uh, we would have technological singularity, and the definition of that is development of super intelligence brought about through the use uh, the user of the use of technology, probably. Um, so he's saying that, or some people are saying that is not just a future scenario, and that it's already here in part mm-hmm. already, because um, what we used to do as as people uh, growing up as kids when we wanted to find stuff out we would have to read books we'd have to go through encyclopedias and everything right now people can just get information just by pulling up the phone and google searching mm-hmm. it so they're saying that uh in the near future when people start implanting computers into your brains and then you can mass upload all this information to those computers well like, i can't do that you have like an un- unlimited amount of knowledge right there at the palm of your hands basically right getting plugged in Right, so they're saying that because of that, it's going to cause people to be pretty much superhumans. They're going to be incredibly intelligent, and uh, yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think of that? So that's like the opposite. Well, not really the opposite, but that's like so. We were just mentioning that you can modify your body to be super healthy. Yeah. Now, now this is your mind, right? Yeah. So, so at this point, it's going to be survival with the fittest now because everyone just as smart. So if you're a weak little shit, you know, get your ass kicked. So, so this, this, um, like you mentioned space travel earlier, right? So I think the solution to when we solve all of these human problems of being too dumb, being too weak, is to explore, right? I, yeah, it's uh, the uh, unity. I think my, I don't know, you guys know who Bill Hicks is. No, I uh, don't. Bill Hicks is a, is a comedian, uh, one of my favorites. Uh, he had this fantastic bit where he ended it with saying, um, I think the line is, uh, we sh- if only mankind can uh, work together and travel towards this something very it was about the unification of mankind and i think that you're right if we uh because we're bored yeah. all we're doing is killing each other yeah. and picking these fights yeah that, that's what wayne basically means i think once we reach that point we're gonna be bored again right when we hit that point where we're super smart super 
like like healthy, we're gonna be bored. There's no problems anymore. It's like so. this is it. Let's go to Mars, guys. Yeah. Let's go find something else to fight or whatever. But yeah, I think that that's like, oh man, uh, I think that. Uh, oh Jesus, where was I in my mind? This I was I was almost there. I was right there. You're right there. Bill Hicks. Bill Hicks. Right. Yeah. It's just a <clears throat> ride, and we should all go to space. There was something before that, guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh man, I smoked too much pot. <laughs> You need this machine to be implanted in your mind, and you would have remembered You'll, everything. You'll go crazy, oh, right. That's though. what it is. It's all being plugged in. Have you guys uh, seen... Black Mirror. Uh, not Black Mirror. Ghost in the Shell. Yeah. That whole, uh, do we sleep or do robot stream of uh, robot sheep or whatever, right? It's, pretty, it's a pretty cool thing, but I think that with super intelligence and with us being plugged into this thing, there's no, there's no place we can't go uh, as humanity. I think at that point, if we are all plugged into the same mainframe, we work together... I don't think we would be kicking each other in the ass. I think we'd be the complete opposite. We'd all be going in the same direction. There is two about- sides of that, though, right? Like, there is the point where it can go Terminator, or it can go, like... like what Everyone it? has Trek, the same right? vision. Yeah. Where- and same vision and goal yeah. to expand life. Yeah. What about uh, on a conspiracy theory- theorist level where, like, people start... Th- thinking that the government is going to take over your brain because of these computers in your head mm. and programming you. Mean like you. right now? Like- <laughs> yeah. And like b- pretty much programming or brainwashing you to act and like do certain things. That's kind of, yeah, it, Wayne is right. That's kind of what happens right now with FISA, with the uh, the U.S. Um, government, right? How they're trying to listen to everyone, right? Like, is it NSA or? Yeah, the NSA. Mm-hmm. So. I like your shirt. Thanks, buddy. Security is, I think, the issue here, right? If they, if they have the key to everybody's uh, brain... Uh, it's like, what can't they do at that point, right? If we're, we have like these computers in our minds, what wouldn't they be able to put into our, like you see it all the time. You look up something on Google and then the next day your advertising yeah. is. Yeah, exactly. So is that brainwashing or is that, because your, your mind needs to still reach the conclusion of that. I need to buy the thing, right? So what point do you set the brainwashing? Is it a direct thing or is it an influence thing, right? Ooh, that'd be tough. <laughs> yeah. Because who will really be smart enough to realize what's actually up there? Like, yeah. w- when would you be able to tell the difference what is natural and what is being, mm-hmm. uh, what is a foreign thing? Like, I always had this thing. You remember Google uh, Google Glasses? Yeah. yeah. Like, I always thought that was a cool idea. Then I realized, but what if, like, spyware and, 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 like, all that spam ended up there, right? You're trying to get to a sandwich place, and then out of nowhere, it's like, telling you where the nearest subway is but i don't want to go to subway <laughs> but it's like here's subway now you've yeah. got all these subway ads and you know where all the subways are mm-hmm. and you know, then, the app ways is it does that now really yeah it directs what, you towards like like as you that, drive and you stop it'll tell you there's a tim horns right uh right like nearby wow yeah or if there's a sport checks having sale i'll let you know that too just putting it put it in your mind yeah that's so messed up because you know people would fall for that. Yeah, but it's pretty damn good when you need a sandwich. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's but true. When they know you're on a long road trip, they're like, yeah. McDonald's oh, two kilometers man. away. I'd love to know, man. I'd, I'd actually love to, as spooky as it is that they're spying on us, I'd love to just go in there and find out how that works and just like, mm-hmm. what are the, like, is it keywords that they're looking for? Is there a computer that finds that algorithm and locks you down and says, okay, target this guy with everything, all that stuff that he likes. Like I was uh, when I when we played paintball, all of my advertising was like all prepper stuff. Like there was like all these like zombie survival like programs and stuff were showing yeah, yeah. up next to my Facebook. Uh, how to defend <laughs> your home with a pistol or mm. like a close quarter <laughs> combat course in your house. I'm like, what are you what? It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> weird. So like to to kind of explain that because um, I don't know too much about it, but I can kind of conceptually understand how it how it works, right? So what they do is they know your internet provider, right? So they okay. know your IP address, right? Um, from there, they can generalize. Like the Google, Amazon, Microsoft, any of the big companies has a general bio of who you are. Mm-hmm. You are a this age person, this sex, interested in like a list of like this many hobbies, right? Yeah. So what they do is whenever you Google anything, when you click on anything, they, they buy that information from that person that this person's IP address is linked to them doing this oh. action. Oh, then they they fucking all, hate that. They all basically sell it and pool it to each other, where to the point, and then they they calculate that, and then your bio keeps getting updated with new hobbies. Yeah. What's on your bio? What's, <laughs> what is your bio? This is this inside this a robot. Because yeah. a lot of this shit, just totally, they're listening now. It's I'm like so much more emails from Amazon this now because of this shit. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, you do one search like, <laughs> for no reason, <laughs> and then two weeks later they'll be like, "Hey, you want to buy this?" 
because it's uh, on yeah. sale or whatnot, right? I'm learning how to make knives, and now so, like advertising is coming up for me to buy like an oven, like yeah. a metal oven. I'm like, <laughs> what? Why? I can't. It's just a hobby. But they're like totally pushing me in the direction that I should start by. But like, what is your what would be on your uh, your profile? On uh, my profile, <laughs> I think uh, they would probably advertise a lot of like traveling stuff to me because I I look up like a lot of flights and like, oh, yeah. traveling stuff. So that's probably what they would try to hunt me. Kayak down. sales. Yeah, it's on sale at Costco right now. They, well, they clearly didn't advertise that to me. <laughs> like, he didn't God know. Damn. <laughs> How yeah. about you? What's on yours? I can't say. <laughs> That's very suspicious, Wayne. Is it blow orange juice? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, I search up the most random stuff because you know how I always this go to fine, different man. hobbies. Like, I'll be getting so places. Much, no, like, I've been getting a lot of uh, pegboards uh, ads. Okay. Because you know how I install the pegboard? Or, like, you don't need to make excuses. Key accessories. Like, fine, I'm like, just saying. Like, it's like, very annoying. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like there's a deep, dark secret. Yeah. He's, just, he's trying he's to, just, like, dance around the world. <laughs> yeah, you, can hear, you can hear the moves. Yeah. You can hear the moves, man. What yeah. about you, Dan? What would it... What would... Uh, right now, a lot of my ad stuff comes up to either, uh, like, tech, like little gadgets, like camera stuff, um, studio stuff, and Jordans. Jordan, so, specifically so, Jordan. Yeah. If you guys were in this, if you guys were in the studio we're at right now, there's nothing but samurai swords <laughs> and shoes. I just bought a sword recently too. <laughs> I gave it to uh, my sister's uh, my sister's boyfriend because he graduated like uh, his boot camp. Oh, and, yeah, so you I was like, yo, let me. Yeah, I'll give him a little dagger. It's a, it looks like a katana, a short okay. katana. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I was like, yeah, I bought one of those. So now I see ads for those as well too. Yeah. <laughs> so, what about you, Joey? What's in yours then? Uh, um, mine would be uh, it'd be tactical gear, and, tactical gear. Yeah, tactical gear and ramen. <laughs> <laughs> so they think you're probably like a, a Japanese spy. Then. Oh yeah, <laughs> for sure. That's exactly what it is. It's just me trying to find weird tactical stuff and how to make noodles, buddy. I remember I got so high last month. I watched an Asian man make ramen noodles. That's uh, art. Though. It's, that's yeah, art. it's buddy. That's pretty dem- you saw that video? Or I you- watched a lot of them. There's that video where the. There's this, you guys got to Google it or whatever, but there's, this guy's making, I think he's making soba noodles. Oh, but I've seen the soba noodle guy. The yeah. soba noodle guy. And yeah. it's just, he's in this room and there are people watching him, but they're all like dead quiet. You could like hear them breathing and coughing. And this guy's just got a spotlight on him and he's just quietly making soba noodles. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> and I'm like why is this so good like it's so satisfying the the preparation the way he folds yeah, it yeah he has to like mas- okay he has to like massage it and then it becomes squares and he like flips them on each other and then he does it again and he flips them on each other and again then he just and cuts, then he cuts yeah it's like, it's, it's like th- so who thin. thought of that who thought you guys <laughs> that's some crazy Japanese stuff man I'm wondering if that even does anything or is that all for show right cause oh, it just like just does it <laughs> Watch him I'm go sure to his- they believe it so they keep it going yeah, just just the big. It's the big lie. Oh my god! It's a thirty minute video, Dan. You gotta check it out one day <laughs> for one pa- one pack of ramen. If that was on Blu-ray, I'd buy it. Thirty minutes? You must. That must have felt like two hours to you. Then oh, buddy, that, you I was like... blitzed. I was <laughs> I was uh, doing a forty hour straight work week, and I was just like, oh my god, I need something to stop. <laughs> Look at ramen videos. So in Japan, they also have this new technology that just recently came out too, or they're developing right now, and they're saying that they're expecting it to release in 2017. And uh, it's basically, it's called Ely, and uh, what it does is it um, is able to translate what you speak into a different language on the spot. Really? Yeah, so you can be traveling to a different country. Right now, they only have English, Japanese, and Chinese built in. But yeah, they should. They have the video, the demoing it, and it's basically like white people. They're talking into it, and then it translates in Japanese to the people that are nearby. They're like, "Where can I find this food? Where can I go to this place and stuff like that?" And like, it translates on the spot. And it's like nuts. Fucking crazy. You know, what I find would be very flawed with this. Let's say if you have a very strong accent mm. and you start using it without really testing it, how do you know it's translating to the like correct term? Oh, that's true because the output right? is in a different language. Yeah, oh, it's yeah, like you can't act- freeze. Yeah. <laughs> it's like. You're asking them where the closest toilet is, and it's probably translating to where can I buy nuclear bombs. <laughs> probably, you know, right? Oh, wow, that escalated oh, so man. <laughs> you really jumped the gun on that one. <laughs> oh, my God. Are you going to, like, North Korea or something? Just like? a Japanese man looking at me saying, Huh? Oh. <laughs> it was like, he actually gives you directions, right? A nuclear bomb, son. <laughs> Sorry, but... I think it's super fascinating because, like, a lot of people these days, they pride themselves on learning a new language. It's like mm-hmm. one of the goals. Like, what is that? What is oh, that? So lame. Was that a stone bullshit? 
And like now, it's gonna defeat their entire purpose. Or like, you don't even need to learn another fucking language. Yeah, it's hard to learn a language too, it's, though. Yeah, yeah this would make traveling so much easier, yeah, yeah. right? You're going Google, back to school. Google does have that app though, where it translate uh, text. images. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. pretty neat. Oh, I have that. Okay, so if you're ever traveling and then you're in like a room and you need to wash your clothes, and this is a laundry machine. Laundry machines are the most complicated ass looking things <laughs> around the world. You don't know what the hell the knobs and buttons mean. Because your your clothes go in, your clothes can like come out like like fucking wet. So I've had a similar like, similar experience, but not with a washing machine. It was with a toilet in Thailand. Oh, oh, it that's was, also important too to yeah. make sure. But it, it was your ass like up. yeah. So I was just testing them all out, yeah, and I was satisfied attention. with every single button. It was great. Really? Have yeah, you guys all had a bidet experience? Yeah. Like yeah, so I had to go like, lick my butt once. I feel like it's very similar. <laughs> That's called a Honestly, it's job, like right? a, a life-changing moment, for sure. Like so the first time somebody licks your butt? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess it's so. Pretty much that. No, but those bidets, like, so it sprays your cheeks, then it sprays directly in the hole. <laughs> well, okay, that's the, the, best. the weirdest thing is you don't expect the water to be warm. That's, no. the, that's the thing. I wasn't oh, expecting wow. it to be warm. So somebody's peeing in your butt. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, it warms, <laughs> like, heated seats. No, but... The thing that catches you off guard when it's like is literally like a laser shooting up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you gotta like to clench to yeah. make sure it doesn't so penetrate. Your, your first reaction is like, oh, and then oh. Well, <laughs> 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 oh, it was great. I just sat on it for like too long. <laughs> too long. That's, that's... Okay. All right. Oh, I gotta. I gotta get a bidet. Bidets are life changing, man. If you go to Japan, most most places have bidets. Yeah, my girlfriend came back from Japan. She told me bidets bidets are king. Yeah, so I like have to buy it. there. Well, don't, don't worry, honey. I'll buy a bidet with our <laughs> first million dollars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, I think yeah, definitely traveling with this would be good. Um, I'm curious what you guys think if if you think like we'll all only know one language afterwards, like because if we have a translator and it makes us too lazy to learn new languages, you mm-hmm. think we'd just all go together to one language you know i've i've saw a documentary before when obviously it's not for every, it's not the same for everyone once you start learning more than one language you become less proficient in the other really yeah because i guess if your mind's not like focused yeah like able to focus on like a single language then you kind of you kind of like I, it makes sense for me too like when i was a guy i knew a lot of chinese i think now that i know more english Less Chinese. Yeah. Like, I struggle. I struggle with Chinese. Really? Yeah. I think that's true because uh, I talked to somebody at my old job as well, too. And uh, he used to speak predominantly French where he is. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when he came over here, he started speaking a lot more English. And he was saying how he used to think in French, Mm -hmm. but now he thinks in English. Oh, wow. Yeah. That is a weird change. I remember remember as a kid, I used to think in Chinese, and now it's always been English. You know what's weird? After I went to China 10 years ago... I was thinking in Mandarin. <laughs> like, with the little Mandarin wow. that I learned at the time because I went to a little school there. Not anymore, though. I forgot all that shit. <laughs> you know what's weird? How many times we said, you know what's weird? <laughs> in the last, like, two minutes. That was a what's weird thought. <laughs> hey, man, you know what's weird, bro? <laughs> That's so... I'm I'm English, man. Like, I'm, I'm not... Uh, I understand Tagalog, which is a Filipino mm-hmm. language. I understand it, but I can't speak it that well. Mm-hmm. Wait, mm-hmm. how do you pronounce it? Tagalog. Tagalog. No, it's no, Tagalog. It's Tagalog. T- Tagalog. Like, okay. a Filipino guy told me the language, uh, like, what language he spoke. I thought he said Delgados. Delgados? <laughs> Delgados. Yeah. Delgados. It's funny when people talk about uh, Tagalog, they always say, You speak Tagalog? I'm like, <laughs> I've heard that a lot. Tagalog. <laughs> like, you got it, it's like a horse, like, going through water. Tagalog, Tagalog, Tagalog. It's <laughs> the best way to learn. Okay, so we kind of talked about how, uh, Robots could potentially take over our jobs and stuff and AI and stuff like that as well, too. But uh, in terms of politics as well, uh, there's a survey done in the UK where uh, they only interviewed 2,000 people, so not a huge sample size. But apparently one in four people thought that AI, uh, artificial intelligence, would make better politicians than Ooh. humans. But that's and very subjective. Here is where the math doesn't really make sense because it says 66% of people foresee it to happen in 2037 or by 2037. 16% think it'll happen within the next one to two years. 
and then thirty five percent said it will not happen because the robots can't analyze cultural aspects. Those those sixteen percent of people are just like have no idea what's going on. <laughs> they were just asked the question. It was like uh, uh, next year. It's robots? like Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah. Like when Jimmy Kimmel asks people questions on the street. Yeah, that like, guy's a freaking genius, man. The the Starbucks question where he asks them like which star Starbucks came out with a new coffee? Which one is better? They're the same coffee, and it's just like <laughs> people like try to describe this one's better. It, it's kind of like how uh, people are like bashing on Obamacare, but then they're like pro. Uh, of the Affordable Care Act, it's like the same, same fucking same thing. thing. Same thing, man. If, I don't know if AI would make better politicians. I think that any anybody would be better than Hitler for sure. Uh, <laughs> because, but um, Trump? Uh, yeah, I guess so. I mean, would it would an AI be a racist? Would that be possible? Probably. Would an AI Billy. be able to? But this would be totally like iRobot stuff, right? Where if they have to govern people, it could get to a point where it's like. They decide what's right and wrong and yeah. what's better for the society. I don't think they can. It's so subjective. It comes down to whoever programs robots. No, I don't think they can, no. though, because, yeah, robots won't be able to take in, like, human suffering properly, right? Like, in terms yeah, of, they like, don't consider people, it. Yeah, people need a process to do something, and there's a lot of pain points to get to the results, yeah. right? Robots would be like, point A to B, that's it. Yeah, how to, whatever, how to, by any means necessary, yeah, whatever happens. Yeah, the most direct possible way, right? Mm-hmm. So it, I, robots might become Hitler if, if they're. No, power, I, I'm think. pretty sure there is going to be some sort of factors for robots to analyze, like let's say, um, unemployment rate or like uh, poverty rate. It'll okay. look into all these little factors and then probably create some t- type of policy. Like again, it comes down to whoever creates these robots. If the ro- if the, whoever is creating this robot has a Hitler mentality, yeah, it's going to become Hitler. A robot surveyor. No, but these robots learn on their own. Like, you, if you're talking oh, about this level okay. of intelligence, you're talking about learning robots. Yeah, like if you're talking about this level of intelligence, they don't. No one programs them. A Someone, learning computer. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's how they become based on, uh, you know, however they're what they learn, right? Yeah. I think I think they can be robots as long as we uh, input history. If we teach them what has happened before, yeah. <laughs> then it's going to say, "Don't do any of this stuff, man." Yeah. It's going to say, "War is good. It took out the disease." Bad humans. <laughs> and let's go say it with bad humans. Stay the fuck home. <laughs> eviscerate. Eviscerate. Speaking, oh. speaking of wars, um, recently the Russian army apparently created a uh, a new missile. It's, uh, what is it? It has constructed a Zircon hypersonic cruise missile. Oh, what what does that mean? Oh, and it's a fast it, rocket, buddy. It can travel up to 4,600 miles per hour. And uh, basically, the Royal Navy just came up with two new uh, aircraft carriers that costed, like, what, um, I don't know how many billions of dollars, like six point something billion dollars each or something. I'm just making numbers up at this point. But uh, <laughs> they, have, honest. they pretty much said that they have no means of stopping this if they shot it right now. Like, they're defenseless against this thing. Why would someone admit to that? Like, that's a terrible thing to yeah. admit to. We can't stop this. Like, And this one missile can take out an entire uh, ship in one shot. Oh, that's not so bad. Oh, I can believe it. And they said that even if they had their self-defense the rockets right now to stop it, even if they were stop it, like they can't detect it coming first enough, yeah, uh, yeah. fast enough. First it's of all, too quick. And if they did, and they stopped it, all the projectiles that came from the explosion would be enough to disintegrate Wait, the, what, the ship they, as well. Too. Did they say what's the cost of, to make one rocket? Um, I I believe it did. Actually, they might not know because you know what? if the cost of making this one rocket is uh, higher than the cost of making that one ship. No, no, a, it's, it's not. It's yeah. not. Oh, it's, it's, not. it's much cheaper. I think it's uh, maybe like four hundred thousand dollars to make the Russians the, find a way, man. And it's capable of carrying nukes too. Oh yeah, wait, it's, wait it's the, a package that delivery. rocket can so it blows up and it can also carry more nukes to shoot out. No, the payload, no. the payload, the payload, is, payload. Uh, you yeah. can change out the payload. Oh okay. Wow, you are you are imagining something crazy, Wayne. You were imagining a rocket with more rockets. A on robot. It. No, rocket. I was thinking of like that fucking uh, Hellfire or something, right? Oh, like it's so it shoots, it shoots a, a lot, so much more. Yeah. yeah. So, Shit. It says here it can be fired from land, sea, and submarines, carrying payloads ranging from high explosives to nuclear. Yeah, but what's the range on a rocket like that? Like, well, how close do they have to be in order to hit? Well, it goes for. I don't think they have to be close. Hour. Okay. Like, yeah, they, they, they can shoot it from outside of a range where it's detectable. Oh, okay. And by the time they detect it, it's too late. Oof. Well, if it's carrying a nuclear... Yeah, if it's carrying something nuclear and it travels faster than you can detect it, by the time you detect it, it's close enough to the thing it needs to kill. Or around <laughs> yeah, the thing it needs to kill. Done. Right. Yeah. But the that's nice the crazy thing is, part. Yeah, you it just, won't even know it came. Because you'd be dead. <laughs> it happens. Because yeah. it's just pretty much shit on the Royal Navy. It's just like, I don't give a shit about your two aircraft carriers. Like You know what, though? It's just technology like this, uh, war technology, is, it's kind of... You could say whatever you want about its capabilities. Uh, but every now and then... It's it might be surprisingly 
not as good. Like it might be not as accurate. It's like a dud. Yeah, it might be a dud. <laughs> like there's a lot of stuff out there. Obviously, war is a huge market. And have you heard of the railgun? Railgun. This is an electric, uh, electrically magnetic powered uh, projectile. But what this thing does is essentially it's a cannon that's about the size of say two semis, two semi trucks. And this thing is an electrical charged projectile, razor sharp. And this thing just can shoot it wherever it wants. This is dead. big like a few years ago, right, yeah. or something? It's and it's accurate, yeah. and it can just hit a hit an engine, and that doesn't blow it up or anything. It just punches through the entire boat and into the engine <laughs> and stops it from doing whatever it needs to do to be an engine. And people are like, oh, that's the game changer. That's a game changing thing. I'm like, yeah, but when are they gonna? When are they gonna really use this? When is this gonna happen? Yeah, you know, I don't get. They keep saying they've developed these new technology, like rockets or whatever, but they're not using it. What the hell? It's literally said it's just money. Yeah, and then that's they say they made another one. What happens to the old one? It's yeah. a waste of money. Use it for God's sake. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, use it and then get undergunned. <laughs> you uh, so you saw like? Uh, have you heard about? This it, people are always wondering what how you intercept a rocket. Now some people will use a surface air missile to contact hit that rocket. Another one is actually this. It's just a minigun. Have you guys seen this? Yeah, the one on the one on ship, terrible. Right? It's, no, it's not though because they, the volume that a minigun fires yeah. is so like it's so much that it can just kind of it's all computer generated. Yeah. So say a boat sees four or five incoming rockets. Now this boat has four miniguns that just find those rockets yeah. in the sky and mm. just shoot them out of the sky. It's wild. But are they going to use that technology anytime soon? <laughs> I don't know. I think like if they're publicizing this stuff, like they don't want a war. Like They just want to say, I have a bigger gun than you. Oh, of course. And then just not have a war. Because that's the point of this. Or else they would keep it themselves and just use it, right? Mm-hmm. Well, that, because that's the best way to win a war, man. Yeah. Play dirty. Yeah, exactly. Play dirty and scare the other let people. nobody know. How did you get Bin Laden? Fucking snuck a bunch of guys in there, <laughs> shot him in his bedroom. <laughs> Didn't tell anybody about it. So, in terms of like politics, do you think there will ever be, uh, or at least in our lifetime, like a one world government where, or do you think it's still going to be separated as like countries and everything like that? Ooh, I think a Futurama. Yeah, I hate my mother, man. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get along with everybody. <laughs> That's a tough question, man. Can, do you find yourself? Do you like everybody that you? Are you able to find something you like in everybody? Definitely not. Yeah. But I don't know. If it if it comes down to a point where it's like I guess I guess yeah, all these countries are gonna have their own different agendas and everything, but uh yeah, it's gonna be tough. Yeah, man, because it's uh what is it, capitalism? Is it capitalism the thing that's killing uh, the world right now? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Trump. Yeah, Trump. Just throwing it out there. We don't wanna operate we don't wanna operate together because we wanna be better than each other. We want to be the best. We want to be bigger. We want to be better. We want to be faster. Mm. Uh, until we think that as a as a unified front, as people, if we think that we can do that together, we can be the best together, mm. I don't know, man. So pretty much what you're saying, one nation's got going to have to suffer for us to be living comfortably. Yeah, we're going to have to kill everybody in Antarctica. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> like six people. Six people. No. And like so- a bunch of SEALs. I, I read this book called uh, Ready Player One, um, and it was a very interesting book because it takes place in like uh, the near future, I think 2040-something, and uh, it was actually pretty realistic in the sense of like the technology at the time. It wasn't so far crazy advanced that it didn't seem unrealistic, mm-hmm. but uh, the world was very different from what it is today. Um, what it showed in that book was that there was like a one-world government type of system where um, there's pretty much the, the rich and the elites controlling the world and the rest of the people the civilians there's no middle class really um the rest of them are pretty much oppressed and uh one of the reasons for this i think what happened was that uh there's this online game system called oasis in the book and they call it the i can't pronounce it but basically it's um a combination of virtual reality uh full body haptic suits and like world of warcraft oh god right so with the technology that we have here It is kind of heading in that direction. And what it was in the book was that people were so addicted to this virtual reality game where they can live and be someone different in the game and be addicted to it was way better than being themselves in real life, that everyone was playing this game and immersed in it, right? Keep asleep. Exactly. And because of that, nobody really cared about the real world, which allowed 
these rich and elite people to continue to gain power over them, right? Ooh. So the thing with this gaming system was that it was created by these two guys that believe that the internet shouldn't be controlled by the government. Mm-hmm. So they created this system to play for free. And the whole premise of the game was that uh, this guy was dying and in his we will... Spoiler alert. This like oh, sounds like you're giving a spoiler quite a, alert. Quite a lot of plot away. <laughs> Well, basically, yeah, they're, they're supposed to, like, the whole premise of the movie is that they're supposed to beat the game. Every game has Easter eggs, pretty much, right? Yeah. So you have to complete the Easter eggs that this game has, and the first people to do it get to become the the owners of the game, basically. They get the rights to the game. And so this government, who is, like, super rich and powerful and stuff, they're hiring all these gamers and everything to try and do that. And then these other kids who are really good at games are trying to beat the game and protect what they have, basically. So... It's a really interesting book. I think they're tr- trying to make a movie out of it as well, too. But uh, I don't know. Like with the technology that we have right now, in twenty forty something, like I could see that kind of thing happening, where people are addicted to this online world and this fake reality and ignoring. Yeah. Real life. I could see that. I mean, you get people get addicted all the time to stuff. I mean, you remember Have a Hotel? <clears throat> yeah, I do remember that. Have a, have a hotel, hotel, man. You're a fun. You're like a little shrimp kid in an animated world. In an animated hotel, you buy furniture and stuff. It's so funny because all my white friends had furniture and I had none, but I always told them to go to their apartments. <laughs> I'm doing that now as an adult. Uh, but yeah, and they get immersed into it because it's that's their life. It's the dream. Uh, but is it as satisfying as feeling what you're feeling now? Is it as satisfying as, as winning and knowing that your body did what it had to to succeed in what you wanted to do? Well, that's the interesting thing because they had the full body haptic suits yeah. so you can feel and touch everything in the game oh, as well too, it. right? Yeah, that's crazy. It feels like such an, such an uh, like inception type of thing. Yeah, on. because that like movie's a, very good. I feel good. like at one point you're not going to know which is reality. It's, it's yeah. basically like that game um, or that movie, Surrogate. Or was it Surrogate? Sugar Gates. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I always pronounced it. <laughs> I'm an idiot. That was with, uh, what's his name? Bruce Russell, Willis. Uh, Bruce Willis? What's the other one? Ryan um with the guy from 300. What's his name? Oh, that's uh, right. It's called Gerard Gamer Butler. or something. Gerard Butler. It's oh, called Gamer. Gamer, where he, where people played an online game yeah, and they were and the, the characters. Yeah, the dude. Yeah, yeah something like that. Uh, Surrogate was pretty much the same thing, too. Yeah, Surrogate. Not yeah, Surrogate. <laughs> Surrogate. <laughs> yeah, so I think that's what it was kind of playing off of. Yeah, I could, I could see that. It's because it's the same thing with the uh, Inception. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Spoiler alert. Uh, for the end of the movie, have you seen Inception? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the end of the movie is they've completed the mission and he's with his kids. But the, the other side of that coin was if he didn't complete the mission, he had stayed in dream state. Right. And in dream state, he can have whatever he wanted. Right. If that meant eternity with his kids, what does it matter? If that's what makes you happy, if, if what makes you happy is what you want and you have it in your head and you feel it and you're being tricked what if, what if reality is the thing that makes you happy? Perfect. Then live it. But reality is just what you perceive reality to be, right? Oh, Everyone's God. reality is different. <laughs> yeah. Super that's, why it's, that's why it's very right? tricky, right? Yeah. It's because in reality, you know, it's you who's doing it. But in the dream, but it, if you, if, but you've had those dreams where you're so sure, <laughs> you know what I mean? Where you know that you ever have that dream where you put something somewhere and you you wake up and you know it's there, but you go there and it's not. You ever have that? <laughs> I think I kind of know what you mean. Yeah, sure. well, you, it's just you're so sure that this happened in your mind. Right. Your mind is powerful enough to. It's like when your girlfriend wakes up and she's pissed at you, pissed off at you because you cheated on her in her dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or when you dream and she tells you that she loves you. Like, <laughs> And then you wake up and you don't have a girlfriend at all and you're lonely. <laughs> your hand is in your dick. <laughs> yeah, I, you know what? I, I think that if that becomes a thing, if that, if that we develop that technology, have it. Whatever, man. Because It's like a drug, essentially, right? Yeah. It's the same thing. I'll tell you, this world is unforgiving. And I think when I worked at the strip club, and this was one of the weirdest things that I ever thought, because when I started, I'm like, oh, these customers are nothing but a bunch of losers, these guys who are here all the time. But then I looked at it from a humane point of view, and I'm like, nobody's going to talk to this guy. This guy can go to any bar he wants to. He can have as much money as he'd like, even. But nobody's going to go up to him and strike a natural conversation. This guy is 
dyed in the wool, a loser, an absolute dweeb. When he talks, when he opens his mouth, no girl is going to be like, oh, I want to spend my life with you. Nobody's saying that to this guy. But he's too dumb to realize that. He's too dumb to know that it's him and it's his fault. He's going to blame the world for sure. Until then, he's going to go to this club and he's going to spend all his money on these women and get the attention that he needs. Because I'll tell you, there is no, there is almost no uh, uh, substitute for human contact. There is a dude. Okay, so there's a girl who worked at the club and she spent five hours with a guy in the VIP. Five hours in the VIP. So she comes down five hours later and I'm like, hey, where were well, you were supposed to do some shows. Where were you? And she's like, I was just talking to this guy. I'm like, talking to this guy? I'm like, yeah. And she gave me $100. I'm like, what? Like, as a tip. And she's like, yeah, this guy just spent $4,000 just to talk to me. His Man, wife died five years ago. Yeah. He was traveling the world, wow. and he all he wanted to do was talk to somebody. And people and people are like, oh, yeah, strip club guys are disgusting. I'm like, yeah, but you're not going to give any of these people the time of day. You're not going to talk to that guy who only has one eye. You're not going to do it. Don't talk to me like you give a shit about these people when you don't. On a humane level, everybody needs that. Everybody needs that satisfaction of knowing that they've lived a life that was worth it. And if you don't, what's the point? Mm-hmm. And if you're going to live, if you have the ability to live a dream where you can have whatever you want, whatever, have it, buddy. If nobody gets hurt, have it. Yeah, I agree. The, the big point is that it doesn't bother anybody and interrupt anyone else's life. Yeah then it's it's your life to live right like if someone is like 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 society has a very bad view on like drug use right mm-hmm. but if they're not like harming anyone else and it's their choice to do it and they're in their own home why not right it's their choice it's right? their life yeah let exactly. them have it let them do it yeah deep shit man dropping knowledge yeah I don't all know. right well that's pretty much it for this week here joey we do want to thank you for uh joining us oh thanks man uh, this thank and you. last week yeah, it was and, really great. Last week and, was great. Uh, yeah, flew in from uh, Honolulu. Yeah, memorable, memorable. Uh, let the people know again where where they can follow you and. Uh, uh, yeah, guys, I'm a regular at the Corner Comedy Club, uh, and that is Toronto's best comedy club. And I'll tell you why it's because we talk about everything. We don't care. We're uh, 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 comedians who will talk about everything because that's the best way to do it. Leave no rock unturned. Let's you know keep talking. Corner Comedy Club, Queen and John. Come on down. I'll buy a drink and go to the bathroom and wipe your butt if you want. <laughs> Whatever you need. <laughs> Thanks for taking the time to listen all the way to the end. To follow us on all of our social media, go over to our website, www.faultylogics.com. All of our stuff is there. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, it's all there. Again, thanks for joining us and see you next time. Peace. Yeah. Okay, let's do it.